I always volunteered at retirement homes. Sure it's maybe not the most fun way to spend a weekend, but it really helps people and maybe pads out a resume nicely too. As you may be able to imagine, not everybody there is happy. But this specific resident took her boredom and anger, and channeled that into a most unsavory pastime. Alright, ma'am, here's your water. The nurse practically screamed at the old woman next to me. The woman was hard of hearing, and the nurse was starting to lose it by the fifth. Pardon. Once she exited the room, the old woman next to me leaned over and, practically giddy with excitement, exclaimed that she was getting out of this dump next week. Her words, not mine. That's great. I half yelled at her. She nodded and grabbed a chessboard under the table we were seated at. She opened it up and made her first move. She moved the night. After a couple of turns, I started to ask her questions about her and her hobbies. The usual boring questions and the typical bland responses. About halfway through the game, though, she asked me a question that caught me off guard. After I get out of this cramped place, would you like to come to visit me at my house? Maybe have some tea? Naturally, this was an activity I would have preferred to avoid. I started to run down a list in my head of some excuses. Blanking, I asked, when, how about the 4th of next month what time? 6. Shoot, I said, I'm busy then. The old woman started to get a little pouty. I don't know what came over me. Maybe it was the guilt of lying to this nice person, perhaps it was the expression on her face, but I agreed. The first thing I noticed was the gothic feel of the house. The structure was quite dated, and the unkempt grass and trees in the front yard were clear proof that it had been a while since someone had lived here. The house was also a little deserted. Thick trees covered the edges, and had the sun not been behind me, and not to the left or right, I would have had trouble finding a door. I walked up a decaying stone step, gripped the door knocker, and slammed it into the door. It took a while for the woman to answer. It was getting colder out by this time of night, not to mention we were well into full. I was almost excited to walk into the house, despite the looming awkward small talk. She smiled at me and closed the door behind her, locking it using an old looking key. You can never be too careful, she told me. I laughed, clearly misreading what I thought was a joke. We lived in a nice neighborhood. She led me through the dusty, ancient front hall to what looked like a lounge room. The lights were barely on. I could make out the fine china all along the walls, however. She directed me towards a seat, and I sat. She put out a bony finger, the universal sign for wait one minute. She added on her way out the door, I'll get some tea. I hated tea. But I was not about to complain to her. While she was gone, I took in my surroundings. One word came to mind. Old. Very old. Before I summoned the courage to stand up and look around, she returned with two teacups, a kettle, and a tray. I have to say they were very nicely decorated, and most likely cost her a fortune. She poured the tea and sat down. I politely took my cup and took a sip. And then another. And then another. It was actually pretty good. This was definitely not the tea I was used to drinking with my grandmother. Upon realizing how much I was drinking, the old woman smiled, and after wiping her mouth with a handkerchief, then she said she wanted to show me something. I took a quick sip from the cup, and shot up to catch up with the surprisingly fast woman. She was out of sight before I got up the stairs. Hello. I yelled into the hallway. Her house was built like a maze. And the dizziness I was feeling did not help. I blamed it on the cough medicine I took before I walked inside. I was allergic to cats, and one look at the house's exterior told me that I might be in for some puffy eyes. Then I noticed the messaging system on a nightstand. It was old, don't get me wrong, but it seemed a bit too new for a house like this. Then it blared, hello. Madeline. I'm your nurse from Riverwood Retirement Home, and I'm wondering where you are. It's been a while since you checked yourself out, and you're due for an appointment in an hour. Call me back. Then the receiver clicked. I would have thought about why she lied about leaving the place, but then I heard the familiar voice of the old woman. She was making amends and promised to be there quickly. I would have listened, if not for the dancing clock ahead of me. I was in a trance. The woman's words echoed in and out like a song, and the hallway started to dance around me. In and out, in, and out, in, and out. I couldn't help but dance along. Then I passed out. When I came to, the first thing I noticed was my heartbeat. It was swift. Then I saw the gag. Then the straps around my wrists, then the chair. Panicked, I looked around again and this time noticed the room. Why it didn't light up well compared to the house I was just in. It made my head hurt. 
my disheveled brain did not register the smell at first. The scent was eerily recognizable. It was the unmistakable smell of the house. I was still in the woman's home. Then my body started to catch up to the backlog of instructions from my brain. I began to scream, not that it made much noise on account of the gag. I started to panic even more. And more. And more. Fortunately, though, I was a logical person. After a little bit, I managed to formulate a plan. You see, the thing about nearly senile old ladies is that they are not very strong. Nor do they know how to tie a knot. After exerting almost no energy, my thrashing arms easily bested the straps on my wrist. I removed the gag and walked to the door. The old woman was not expecting me to escape so quickly, so the door was not locked. I opened the door and walked out. I was in a familiar place. The lounge room. I guess the dimmers made it hard to see a door before. I did not have time to dwell on that though. I had to escape. I walked towards the front door. And noticed the lock. She had not locked the door to keep someone out. She had locked the door to keep someone in. I panicked and tried to remember where she left the key. I was not happy to remember she had it on her person. I know that she was in an appointment on account of the voicemail left. I knew I had not been in the room long. I just had to wait for her to come back. I can easily overpower an old woman and take the key. So I decided to snoop around. The first thing on the agenda was how the hell she got me to faint. I knew she had spiked the tea with something. I was looking around for a bit, to no avail. Then I heard the keys click. I hid in the lounge, waiting for the woman. She hummed some sort of tune as she made her way to the door I was supposedly in. When she rounded the corner, I jumped out and began to look for the key on her person. I found it almost immediately. Heart pounding, I started to bolt for the front door. I hear Otter yell for someone and subsequently heard footsteps pounding up the stairs. I was not going to find out who was coming up those stairs. I slammed the door down on this person's hand, guaranteeing me some time to make it to my bike. Escaping death and the terrible stench in her home. I sold well about that day. She was arrested, and the man who she was calling was also put away. It was all over our city's news. I still think about how close I had come to whatever fate she had in store for me. What if that man had tied me up instead? What if he had beaten me to the door? What if he was with her? I decided to take a walk to think things through when I saw a dreadful sight. A dead raccoon. Then I recognized the scent. The scent of death. This was the scent that still haunts me to this day. The smell I smelled in that house. I learned that day that I was just a lucky one. 